This is a demonstration of the Shark Liftaway Anti-Hair Wrap Upright Vacuum Cleaner in comparison to its competitor, the Dyson Lightball Upright, which is now called a small ball and is blue instead of yellow. As you can see, mine is yellow, so it's a slightly older version. The new Shark features anti-hair wrap technology, which is basically a bunch of yellow blades, which are supposed to stop hair from being wrapped around the brush bar. I decided to put this claim to the test. Here it is in action with some long pink threads. As you can see, it picked them all up, but the brush bar looks like this. <gasps> what? Apparently, you're meant to let the vacuum run on a hard floor for it to work properly. But as you can see, I've taken it to the next level and it still doesn't work. I appreciate this design, but what good is it when the orange fluffy roller can get wrapped in hair as well? It's a lot harder to clean than a normal brush bar, so take that into consideration. The orange roller can be removed for cleaning at the push of a button, as you can see. However, unfortunately, the main brush bar, which is the one that does all the work, isn't removable. A lot of hair does tend to build up behind this orange roller, so it's good to take this out and check every once in a while. In comparison to the Dyson, where the brush is removable at the push of a button, as you can see, the brush bar has a wide diameter, so it resists hair tangles much better than a lot of vacuums out there. So without the need for any tools, the brush bar literally comes out, you can clean it and then put it back in, job done. It could not be any simpler. Anyway, back to the shark. It has some nice finishing touches as you can see, such as the rubber coated wheels, carry handle and the main handle. The suction of this vacuum is very good at the hose, however, because of the dual clean design allowing for larger debris to get sucked in, this means that suction will leak from the orange roller, resulting in less suction being focused inside of the carpet and more suction leaking at the front of the vacuum. This isn't the best thing for deep cleaning carpets because the brush bar does most of the work. Not to say that's a bad thing, it's just that it could be better when the suction is focused inside of the carpet. For example, look at how this Dyson cordless lifts the carpet on its lowest setting. Yes, lowest setting. And then we go into the middle setting, which does a wow, look at that. And then boost. Oh, wow. I bet you he glued the carpet to the hoof. Oh, it's actually powerful. Now for the all new shark. Well, well, it is sucking the carpet up somewhat. It is trying, bless it, but it's not doing it as well as the Dysons are. Oh listen, you know that pipe here that's in between the wheels? Well it's now made of a much more stronger and thicker material. So basically the older sharks used to have that pipe splitting all the time and therefore the machine would do suction. So it's nice to see that they've improved the design and listened to their customers. And by the way, I love how quiet this vacuum is, listen. Not to mention the incredibly cool headlights. Look, two on the front of the vacuum and one on the hose. Such a useful feature to vacuum in dark areas such as under your bed and behind the sofa. This vacuum features three different settings. Hard floor mode, which gives you full suction on hard floors and also slows down the brush bar and roller to stop bits flicking around a low carpet pile setting for carpets and also a setting for thicker carpets which allows the suction to be reduced along with the power switch. On hard floors the dual clean technology allows for larger debris to get sucked up. In comparison the Dyson has the option to open the suction gates to pick up larger debris like that. It's got stiff bristles but you can't turn the brushes off like a Dyson so you can't vacuum Delica rugs. This vacuum features lift away technology. At the push of a button, the vacuum canister detaches so you can vacuum under low furniture. The headlights make it a lot easier to see all the dust in there under your bed. The headlights make such a big difference and look at the contrast when it turns off. There you go. And at the push of a button, the wand comes off and so does the hose handle to use it in handheld mode. You can attach either of the onboard tools onto the end of the hose or wand. So either the stair tool or the 2-in-1 combination crevice tool with the brush that slides down. 
The main head can also fit under the hose as well if you don't want to use a wand extension because the wand cannot be adjusted shorter. Even though it's one of Shark's biggest vacuums, it's still pretty lightweight. It's quite a manoeuvrable vacuum so you can go around furniture with ease, but it takes a bit of getting used to if you had a Dyson ball because the Dyson ball rolls on a ball making sharp 90 degree turns. It's just that the Shark needs to be manhandled a bit more than the Dyson does. You know what though, I hate this hose bracket because no matter how well it's clipped in, it will always come back off with slight vacuuming motions. Look, wibble wobble, and there it comes off. Also this hose is very short so you're forced to carry the vacuum in your other hand. This makes stair cleaning a bit difficult one handed. Compared to a Dyson for example which has a very long hose and therefore makes stair cleaning a lot easier. The handle on the shark though is quite bulky and large and so it makes it a bit awkward to use with the attachments for smaller jobs like dusting when all you need is just a hose cuff like that. Larger handles just make the unit seem more cumbersome and give you less control of using the attachments. Imagine trying to clean it in between the gas, clutch and brake pedals in your car. In comparison, the Dyson just has a nice simple hose cuff which is very small and therefore makes it a lot easier to vacuum in confined spaces as you can see. With the shark's hose being located up high in the vacuum, it means it falls over often as you can see. When you pull the hose, it just falls over. It would be better if the hose was located at the bottom of the machine and therefore it won't fall over but instead will follow you around. On to the cyclone system now. The shark system isn't great because you need at least two cyclones for dust and dirt to be separated properly from the airflow. The shark only has one. I mean look where the dirt enters the bin, it's right next to the shroud which it then leads to the filter directly next to it meaning fine dust and dirt particles and hair etc will quickly make the filter dirty. Whereas with the Dyson you have two stages of cyclonic separation. Before the air goes to the filter, the main bin is one and then any dust that gets sucked into the shroud is separated by the smaller cyclones before the air then gets filtered into this filter which is why Dysons need less filter maintenance so you can do more vacuuming and less cleaning of the filters. The Shark has a post motor filter as well which you need to check and wash so I mean it is nicely sealed which is great so if you've got allergies it's brilliant and it's got HEPA filter as well so again brilliant for allergies you just wash that filter along with the sponge leave it to dry and then pop it back into the machine when you're done. The Dyson also has a HEPA filter which is nicely sealed with these rubber seals as you can see so no air gets past the filter if you've got allergies this is a great choice as well. Right, on to empty now. The shark is a bit messy to empty because the release button is right at the bottom where the dirt falls out so you need to be careful with the dust and dirt as you empty it. It's a design that requires improvement because the moment the dirt falls out your hand is right next to that. You've got no choice but to splash the dirt into the bin resulting in dust clouds. Compared to the Dyson where the release button is right at the top of the handle it couldn't be any better. So you can stick the container all the way down into the bottom of the bin or a bag in this case actually which is what I'm doing. Seal it up nicely. Release it and then job done. That is way more hygienic compared to the shark is. In terms of edge cleaning, the shark's brush bar doesn't reach all the way up to the edges. So there's a blank space at the sides, meaning it won't clean up right to the edges. Here's a demo of it compared to the Dyson. So the Dyson did a much better job than the Shark at edge cleaning because it's better designed. So to summarise, the Shark is a great vacuum, if you don't mind the small legals I mentioned, then you've got a really good vacuum, go for it. And by the way, I just want to say thank you all so much for getting me to a thousand subscribers, 
I really can't thank you enough. I'm overwhelmed. So, I have some incredible videos on the way just for you lot. Thank you so much. Enjoy these mess tests and stay tuned.